Welcome to the continuing series on rear derailleur clutch service. Today we're going to be thinking inside the box, box component. We have a box number two and a box number one. We'll be looking at service on these. But what is this clutchness all about? Well, let's look at some older models that don't have a clutch. A viewer of ours gave us a good term that I like, rotational damping. Okay, so it's, it's gonna take up energy in that in rotation of the cage, on the rotation of the cage. To really see what these things do, it's best to go see them in the wild. In our chain slap video, it helps retain the chain on the sprocket, especially the front one. So again, the older ones, such as this one, we wind that spring up by shifting, but if you hit a bump, it bounces back and forth. Without damping, what can happen is it's out of control. Get it out of here. These new ones, it's hard to go forward, easy to come back. So we don't have all that energy slapping around. This one, let's have a quick peek inside at the magic. Companies vary on, on how they take this up, but they do all have to, to lose some energy going to be done through friction. So this one has a cap, can come off inside. Box has what they call a clutch pack. So we're going to see, see how this goes here. I'm going to put a little mark. See if we can see that, that little, little gold mark right there. Watch what happens. We, we, we hit a bump, winds up, but it doesn't come back. That's so that there's friction right here. Friction comes back easy. Friction comes back easy. Marches all the way around. We're gonna get inside and see what, what that's about here in a, in a minute, but what is going on with energy loss? Let's have a look at energy. I'm doing okay. We're going to take a temperature right here, a surface temperature right there. Yeah, about a five. 71.9. Now, let's go for a bike ride. Smash, hop, right? Rage, doing the NAR thing. Everything's great. Okay. After that little ride here, now, 80, 80, didn't get hotter in here. That's the friction that's going on. That's energy loss in the clutch, okay? So that's, that's the concept, we're losing energy. So let's look at this one first. Let's pull it off the bike. Box Company has several models, uh, two of the popular ones here, the Box 2 and the Box 1. Here is the cap, simple three screws come out. We've taken that off already. To get down inside, well, we need a little more work. What we need to do first is unwind this cage. So we're going to see that there is a stop screw right there. That stop screw is going to need to come out. As it comes back, it hits the body right there. We're going to remove that with a three millimeter. So I pull it out, get inside. Remove the stop screw, right there. Now, you're gonna feel it unwind. Ah, oh, that's important. Notice that thing unwound clockwise. When you wind this back tight, you reverse it, we're gonna go counterclockwise. That's to wind it up. Don't go back continuing it, you're gonna damage the spring. So, it's a good, important note there. So now, this can come off. Do not mess with that bolt yet. Don't do that. On this model, we're gonna take it off from this side. That's a good reason to remember sometimes, check the manufacturer's website. The clutch pack, the piece that's inside of here, needs to come out. There's a couple of ways it can come out. Sometimes you can tap it against a rubber mat. It's gonna help pop it out. I like the lineman's pliers. I can grab the head of the bolt in this case, right there. Clutch pack comes out. So the bolt here is in to the, the pack itself. It's not in to the body. So there we are. 
So what, what is left inside? If all you're doing is servicing the, the clutch, you don't need to go beyond here. So if it's really dirty, we do want to clean in some, um, some areas. Uh, we're going to grease some areas. Some areas we're not going to grease. Uh, but let's have a look at what's, what's on inside of here. Quick note, we're going to go ahead and leave the pulleys on. Um, you could pull them off, of course, and grease and lube them. But uh, just to save some time today, we're going to, to not do that. We have a T25 head right here. We're going to need to hold here. And inside here is a four millimeter on this stud. And it breaks free. We have three spring hole options. So the default option is that middle hole. So the end of the spring was smack in the middle hole. We have a rubber seal. Gonna place that right there. And now the spring. There we are. Some grease on that, it's getting a little bit dry. It's a good place for some grease. So uh, very nice high quality spring here. Interesting thing while we're looking at it, when you, you tension these springs, any springs, it's gonna be on brakes, spring brakes, anything. It's wrapped so that it, it coils tighter upon itself. So that's, that's the tension we're gonna give it. It's gonna relax to unwind. So to tighten it up, it's gonna wrap this one. You can see it's gonna go clockwise. Counterclockwise, uh, it, it expands. You don't force it counterclockwise. That's when it gets damaged. So that is out. And then in here is the stud. So nice machine surface. What is that for? That's for our, our clutch pack. And what's interesting here, it, I can spin this easily. Isn't that nice? Just the way we saw it going. But uh, it doesn't want to turn this way due to these bearings inside. The little roller bearings are designed to jam against a nice steel stud here. That gives us our resistance. So that's, that's how it goes one way and not, not the other. So this one is done. And inside, let's have a look, nothing. All right, so here, this is where we would be cleaning, uh, degreasing, that, that sort of thing. Uh, but again, today, it's all good. Let's keep going. The clutch pack. So we got several components in here. There are some wrench flats here that are a 17 millimeter. Very, very convenient. And uh, the bolt here is a, in my case, three millimeter. It comes out. And I'm going to put that right in the hole. There's that right there. These washers are very important and their orientation is important. It's not a flat washer. It's a curved washer that provides spring tension. There's actually two of them. Let's go ahead and pull those, pull those off. All right, convex and a concave side. The dome side is up. As you press down with the bolt, these flex and provide a load on the clutch pack. That's a very important, very important part of it. So a spacer is gonna come off and it's keyed. It's got that key way in it because it's going to fit over that hex. So that's not going to, uh, it's gonna rotate one way, but again, not back up the other. So the friction mechanism is all in here. And this is where that energy is lost. So you hit the bump, chain winds up, there's some energy, it's gonna lose that energy, and then it's gonna come back quick. So that's, that's the concept here. So this, this is what we would clean. All dirty, we'd want that totally, totally clean. The two outer pieces, fiber, fiber washer, and then the inner one, steel. So 
That's very, very important. They were dirty, we would get in here with a little alcohol, other solvents, clean them up. Clean on the outside. The inside, once we go together here, we are not going to grease. We want that friction on the smooth, nicely ground polished stud here. We want resistance there. So this surface here is not gonna get greased. Outside, sure, we do need grease there. So let's go ahead and put the, uh, the, the stud back in. It's kind of interesting on this, this model. Stud goes in at the smooth side to the roller bearing. Now the spring body goes, you know, it goes all on, on the inside, not from the outside. So here, if we look inside, we can find a hole there's one, one option inside, inside, right? Right down there, if we can see that. That's going to get that, but before we do, I think I want a little more grease. Let's get a little more grease. A little more grease here. There we go. I want to put a little thread locker inside the threads here. But I don't want to be sloppy with it. So what I'm going to do is use a pick as a feeder. I'm going to get it just inside the threads. I don't want it in the pivot. I just want it in the threads. Now I'm going to continue. Old habit. A new derailleur. There it is. Make sure it's seated in the hole. You can feel it sit down in there. That's nice. Then we had our seal in place. This one's symmetrical, lays right over it. And here, again, we have three options. One, two, three. So the middle one is the default. The middle is gonna get our spring. You could change to wind up the spring even tighter. You could go the other hole to relax the spring. The middle one's typically a good choice. Extreme cases, you want it really, really tight, you would pick the hole that would, uh, would bring it back um, even tighter to, to um, cause you to wind it up more. But we're gonna go back to the middle. Very good. Feels good. All right. The excess liquid thread locker is not going to be spilling around into the pivot. It's going to be right inside where it's doing some good. So I need to hold here and secure this bolt here. About like that, I'm going to say, oh, probably four to five Newton meters is adequate. Did I do it right? It feels smooth. I think it's good. I think we're okay. That's nice. But remember the direction, direction of our windup. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get the clutch pack uh, together. It's our clutch pack all here. We're gonna do some more thread locker. Scoop that up. I'm gonna put that right inside. This is a redundancy. We should point that out. This one is considered adjustable, uh, but any, any uh, compound should go on the inside. We don't want anything on the outside. Now let's go our grease. I'm gonna go the HPG, the high performance grease. It's a thinner viscosity. This gets dropped on. Both sides lubed of this washer does have a key to hex key hole there. It has to lay in. There we are. And then some more grease on this one. There we go. Lay that one there. To push all that together, create our friction, is our two washers here. See the dome side is, is up, convex side is, is up. So we're pushing down on it. 
pushing down on this last piece here. No grease needed here, but that hex does have to line up. And a little grease on these is good too. And helps them stick together. Very good. We continue on the bolt side. And we're going to talk about adjustment here in a minute. There we are. Finger snug. That's all I'm going to do. Just finger snug for now. We're going to crank it later. No grease on the inside. Let's do some grease on the outside just for rust prevention. And we're ready to go back in. Yes. Another reason I like to keep that just finger snug it's easier to get these splines lined up. There are 10 of these, 10 of these little splines here. They have to align right inside. So as I wiggle that in, it should drop fully in. There goes one side. They're all symmetrical. There goes one set. Talk to it nice. Line up, line up. There. See how that's seated below? So they're all fully inside. Both of our, our spline washers are all engaged here. Actually a little recess there. So that's, that's very, very nice. I'm gonna leave the cap off to show you the adjustment. So now, remember we have to wind this back. It unwound this way. We have to wind it back this way to gain, to gain our, uh, our spring tension. And hold, and we have to get that screw in right there. Start that straight. Let's feel this. Wait a minute, that feels like the old ones. There is nothing here at all, nothing. What we can do on this model, that's kind of fun, is on that bolt head that we were messing with, it can tighten up it's not tightening at all, it's gonna rotate the cage. We can actually measure the amount of load or resistance. So when you hit a bump here, boy, I'm one Newton meter. <laughs> it ain't nothing, all right? That's just normal friction. So we have to crank it up, we have to crank it up. So, so I'm gonna go just a little bit tighter and stop. What you're doing is compressing, compressing, compressing those washers. And now, let's see here. It's pretty much four. Yep, that's that's pretty good. That's in fact your recommendations. That's that's in the range up to up to four and a half to, to five, but we're 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 right there. So um, now let's let's get feel it here. Yep, that's how it felt before. So we we now have resistance, and it comes back nice. Resistance comes back quick, so that's great. So now, let's put on the cap, and the cap screws, and these just go down gently snug. All they're doing is holding the cap on. Okay, so that is the box one. There, we swapped them out. This is your box one. This is the box two, which I like because it runs the ice cream truck. The infamous fat bike ice cream truck, one of my favorites. So this one uh, has got some similar features and some that are not. Uh, and I did put it on back on our bike, so to speak, uh, for a purpose. And we're gonna see, quick little service here. Fun. A little twist, off it comes. Look familiar? Kind of is. We have a clutch pack inside, we have our bolt, uh, keyed, keyed plate, pressure plate. Uh, there's the fiber washers there, it's all the same. But we're talking about adjustment. So, first thing we're going to do here is. And so. And now inside, nothing. It's the 10 year old design, 20 year old, whatever. Uh, no clutch at all. It's all in here. So, same concept. 
the bearings inside, the roller bearings, roller clutch, the studs in here. We are going to uh, take this apart. We have our 17 millimeter. And a big difference here, very big difference. Very similar design, there is no nylon ring. This one absolutely needs some thread locker. And I would run the two, TLR2, more heavy duty, absolutely. It's gonna, it's gonna keep it in there longer, it's gonna keep it secure. One day you say, I need to get it out. I, I, I gotta do something in there, pull it apart. Okay, mild heat, hair dryer style, right? Not, not flame, not even an air gun, but you have 150, 180, put it in a cup of hot tea for a while. That'll soften it enough to, to have it removable, but uh, coming out, not a problem. So here again, uh, we would do some cleaning. We have our washers right on the bolt, convex, concave, the dome face down to give us tension. And we would do the same thing. We would clean. That's our keyed pressure plate on top. We're gonna have another fiber washer in our center. Another keyed. Okay, remember our body in here, those splines are going to fit the fiber, all right? They're not gonna turn. What's turning inside this Friction, friction plate here is going to be turning as the clutch pack turns. So let's do the thread locker inside. That should be the very first thing. And again, we're going to feed it in, toothpick, whatever. We don't want it on the outside. We want that right on, there we go, on the inside where the threads are. It's not going to dry on us. This is that anaerobic style. Now I have my grease. All right, that's nice poking up through the little holes. Let's get some more. It doesn't take a ton. Here as well. Good. Friction. Good. Pressure plate, blast. Now it's gonna get trickier. So bolt, same concept. Again, we're gonna just go in kind of snug. We're not, we're not gonna go in very tight because the adjustment is gonna be on the bike. Grease on the outside for rust prevention. Line up the splines and we're going to feed it on in and talk torque. There we go. There it is. Now we're seated fully inside. That's good. We can see how it's moving one way. Same type of thing. We're going to tighten, tighten, tighten. That thread locker is going to cure up in, a, in about a half a day. Give it a few hours. But clearly, I got nothing. I got nothing here. So what, what are we looking for? We're looking for resistance here. The beam style does not work here. They didn't intend it to. There's nothing to put, put it in here. That, that bolt head, it's not here. So this, this type here, the type two, can't do that. So we have to think about one of my favorite things you know I love, some math. Some math, we're looking about that range about four, four and a half Newton meters. We look at that, we're gonna do some conversion. All right, let's think about the perceived effort. We're going to end up putting about eight gallons. Yes, eight gallons at the end of this pulley. If we look at that distance here, eight pounds over whatever we have here, about five inches. Eight over here, it's about 40 inches. All right, so that's getting about, about 30, about, you know, it's not, it's in the range, it's in the range we, we, we want, but 
Right now you can see we got we got nothing. So let's let's start tightening up. Let's see what happens. But we don't want to overshoot. Oh, I feel that. There is some resistance. Absolutely. Urgh, that's some resistance. Do I have enough? No, I do not have enough. So I want to go a little bit more. Let's see, it should. We're not coming down. So I don't want to go really tighter. That's just about what I want. I don't want to go beyond. Of course, it's going to lock it up and not let it swing. But that's why we don't overshoot. We creep, creep, creep into that distance. So let's think about it a little more. We would like to put the wrench on it, but we really can't. Now, a Newton meter, it's not the same thing as a gallon of water, of course. This is using weight, gravity as a force. So the Newton doesn't really do that. It's acceleration in a circle. But this is close enough and good enough, absolutely, for what we need. We're worried about the amount of load on the lever arm in a circle based right here. So we look at the distance here. You can look at the range. It's going to be about eight pound pull. You should be resisting that just about there. So that one is pretty good. That's, that's in the range. Really, really aggressive riding. You could go a little more, a little bit not quite so aggressive and you want it easier to shift. You can go a little less, but that's definitely in our range. So, from there, we are going to put our cap back on. We're going to let it sit because we need that time to get the retaining compound to, to do its job, to dry up and secure those threads before we, we get this out on the ice cream truck for a nice wintertime ride. And that, what you have here, is everything wrapped up in a tidy box. And we will see you on the next clutch service.